Now we turn our attention to the normal distribution. For the IB course, this is the only distribution of continuous data that you have to worry about. So if the problem involves continuous random variable, you immediately switch your brain on to thinking about normal distributions and how to use them. The main difference in your thought patterns for continuous compared with discrete uh, probability distributions is that whereas with the binomial and the Poisson, we could talk about the probability of a particular value occurring, for example, getting exactly six heads from 10 tosses or exactly 10 website crashes per month or whatever. With continuous data, we don't talk about the exact value of the variable, but rather we talk about the, a particular range that the variable might lie within. For example, the probability of the heights of giraffes lying between 5 metres and 6 metres, or being greater than 6.5 metres, or whatever. But it, it's now a range of the, the values of the variable rather than exact values themselves. Now, the, the normal distribution is a two-parameter distribution, just like the binomial, but they're different parameters. The two parameters you need for the to work out problems with the normal distribution are the mean and the variance, or mean and standard deviation, same thing really. And if, if you know those, you can work out all the different probabilities that you need. So before we go on, let's just check your understanding of parameters. It is so important. I've been stressing it and let's summarize it now. So can you tell me these? What are the parameters of each of the three different distributions we're going to be looking at? Let's see if you can put these in here for me. So the binomial had two parameters. Think of tossing a coin. So one was how many times we could toss it. And the second was the probability of success. Yeah. The Poisson only needs one parameter to describe it. And that parameter was the mean or the average number of events per interval. And the normal distribution that we're coming on to now has the mean mu and the standard deviation. So the normal distribution has that famous bell-shaped curve uh, look to it. And it's completely symmetric about the mean. So you've got half the distribution lying to, to the left of the mean and half lying to the right. Also, oops, if I can get this out of the way. The area under the curve has to be equal to one. So if you've got a very tight distribution, small standard deviation, the curve will be, the peak will be high, it'll be sharp. If you've got a much larger standard distribution, much larger standard deviation, then the curve will be flatter, the peak will be lower. That's to make sure that the area under it is always one. Why is that? Over here. Because it's one of the prob one of the properties of a probability distribution function, a PDF. The sum of the probabilities, and with a normal distribution, the sum of the probabilities is just the area under the curve. So the sum of the probabilities has to be equal to one. So if we add up the total area under this curve, it has to be one. So that area is one, that area is one. So they can't be the same height. So it would be giving visually um, wrong information. The equation, if you look back to the equation for the normal distribution, and if you do, you'll see that uh, the equation is completely determined by the mean and the standard deviation. Now the only two variables, I don't like to use that word here, as I said before, but they're the only two parameters in the equation. And that's what we mean by calling it a two parameter distribution. And here, this is important. The area to the left of the mean is a half 
the area to the right of the mean is a half. Why? Because the total area has to be 1 and because the thing is symmetric. So half to the left, half to the right. Now, here's one really, really important feature of all normal distributions, and it's called the 68-95-99.7 rule. And this is something you need to know. <laughs> okay. What does this tell us? Here they've given us the sort of introduction to what we're talking about. We start at the mean, and if we go one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right and find the area under there, that's the probability that a single observation will lie in this interval between one standard deviation to the left and one to the right of the mean, the probability of one single observation lying in there is 68% or 0.68. Okay? So if we've got our normally distributed data, we sample one, just take one observation, then there's a probability of 0.68 that it will lie in this brownie bit. That's the 68% bit. 68? Okay, here's another interesting feature. If we go two standard deviations out, now we better come down to this diagram. If we go two standard deviations from the mean, so we go here it's mu minus two sigma right up to mu plus two sigma, then this area now, the green plus the brown, is 95% of the graph. In other words, a probability of 0.95 that a single observation will lie between here and here. And if we want to do this one more time, go three standard deviations out. So mu, three standard, three standard deviations to the left of mu, the mean, three standard deviations to the right. Then we've just about got all our data. It's almost guaranteed to lie between three, three standard deviations either side of the mean. It'll actually be 99.7%. That's close enough to all of them. So a probability of virtually 1, 0.997 of the observation line between three standard deviations either side of the mean. So that's a really important rule, 68, 95, 99.7 rule. You've got to remember it. So now we go a step further, and this is really important. We're, we're sort of taking this 68, 95, 99.7 rule and saying, well, Okay, this, this seems to tell us something important about normal distributions. Are all norm, normal distributions the same if instead of measuring in them in the normal units, we measure how many standard deviations from the mean? Because that was the important property for that 6895 99.7 rule. One standard deviation either side of the mean, 68% of all normal distributions. Two standard deviations either side of the mean, 95% in all normal distributions. doesn't matter what they are. doesn't matter what your original units were. So if we can change the units to how, instead of the height of the giraffe in metres, we say how many standard deviations is that from the mean, then we can get some really important comparisons and information. You will see this as we go along. But that's, I'm just trying to give you the motivation for this next stage we do of standardising a normal distribution. And standardising it is just a transformation. So we see the transformation here in this box. We transform the value x into a standardised value z. And look at this. This is just a transformation. x minus mu. It's just a translation. And dividing by sigma is a scaling factor. You're used to that from transformations, I hope. So we are just transforming our original normal distribution data into standardized normal data. And the value of x is replaced by its equivalent z. And we just call this the standardized value. We call it z score. 
So the z score of any value of our continuous variable is how many standard deviations that value is from the mean. That's what we mean by the z score. And it's really important you understand that and don't just rush off into formulae. Understand what you are doing and this will make a lot, lot more sense. So now the standard normal distribution, which all normal distributions can be transformed into, has these two important parameters and they're so easy to work with. That's another good feature and good reason to transform into the standard normal. It has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. How good is that? The last thing I want to go over at this stage with normal distributions is that there are basically just two types of problem that you'll be, that you'll be given. So if you know that, then that's the first thing you look for in a normal distribution question. Which one are they asking of these two possibilities? And it's really quite simple and clear once you, you understand that it can only be one of these. The wording might sort of vary and it, you might have to do other things with the probabilities or whatever. But basically you're going to be doing one type of problem or the other. That's it. And you figure that out first before you do any more work. So the first type of problem is the normal, distri normal distribution problem where you are given some values and asked to find the probability. So for example, if this was height of giraffes, what's the um, probability the height of giraffes is less than, I don't know, 6.5 meters? And you can do that if you know the mean and the standard deviation. That's the probability distribution function. That's finding areas or probabilities from values. We can go the other way. We, we can be given the area or the probability of something happening and asked to find, well, what values must that match up with? So then we're just going in the reverse order. We, it's given the name the inverse normal distribution. So it's one or the other. Either you're given the values, asked to find the probabilities, or you're given probabilities and asked to find the values, one or the other. So there's a quick overview, just the main points of random variables, probability distribution functions, con continuous distribution functions, uh, sorry, cumulative distribution functions, and then the three different types, the binomial, the Poisson, and the normal. So I hope that gives you an overview of what this whole unit is about. And now you'll be able to make a lot of sense of the detail as you get into using those solving specific problems using each one of these different distributions.